Hi, Adam Neal with Alco Chemical. In this sector, one of the things I would like to discuss with you is making a detailed assessment and just proper planning for your winter break and or summer break. Um, so having said that, you know, preparation kind of sets everybody up for success um, to ensure that you're all ready when the winter break starts or summer break for that matter. Um, and you're gonna begin by making a comprehensive assessment of your school cleaning and maintenance needs. Um, you're going to write it down and prepare a schedule. And then line up all the janitorial equipment and make a cleaning supplies list. Um, and this is all to ensure that there's enough time to put in the orders and or repairs that are needed for your specific equipment. So sample checklist for your winter break um, checklist. Um, entryways. Um, it's going to be a great place for you to start. Um, you're going to want to you know, eradicate every trace of grime, salt, and snow and ice melt residue, which is easier said than done. Um, you're gonna replace and deep clean the floor matting as needed. It's your first line of defense. So, you know, you can kind of do this in different ways. You know, if you know you have large matting, you can kind of pick them up, transport them outside and pressure wash them. You know, in most cases, it's a lot easier to clean in place and just kind of pre-spray um, the, the matting and then just you know extract with your carpet extractors and then put some fans in motion to ensure that everything dries you know as quickly as possible walls as far as uh, spot cleaning hallways and classroom walls where there's a lot of you know little fingerprints good time to paint chipped or worn surfaces earlier in winter break is best so that the paint fumes have disappeared before the students return thirdly remove dust this allergen, you know, must go. Um, indoor air quality has become paramount. You know, it seems more and more everybody pays attention to how very much important that is. Um, vacuum all services, including ledges, ceilings, furnishings, and air vents. Fourth is going to be your hard flooring and or soft flooring. Um, this is going to be a good time to do a scrub and recoat when necessary. Um, less the work, it requires a whole lot less work than a strip, full strip and recoat. Your shiny floors will welcome your new returning students. Carpet care, you're gonna use a carpet extractor in high traffic areas. Um, and doing this, um, you know, I always highly recommend pre-treating the heavy soiled areas um, and then just using hot water in your extractor to, uh, you know, reclaim these areas. Fourth, clean windows and light fixtures. Light fixtures get dirty, they give off less light. They're also excellent bug collectors, as everything seems to uh, kind of be attracted to the, to the light. Remove the covers to give them a complete and thorough clean. Classrooms. Your desktops, perhaps the most important factor in classroom cleaning. Not only at the top, but the kids like to uh, hide things on the bottom as well. Um, clean and disinfect each desk and chair thoroughly. Remove gum and other sticky substances. Clean and disinfect high touch surfaces such as door handles, the white boards that the teachers use, um, and the uh, drawer handles. Sixth, we're gonna do reference the uh, bathrooms, shower rooms, and locker rooms. Deep cleaning and disinfecting are definitely needed here. Showers, toilets, and urinals. You're gonna clean, remove stains, and disinfect. Clean and disinfect all floors, walls, and surfaces, noting high touch areas. Your floor work is going to include the grout stains, and checking floor drains and cleaning them as necessary as well. As you know, a lot of odors come from the floor drains, and sometimes it's just because the the trap needs to have water, you know, put in there to kind of seal out some of the uh, odors that come from the super. So continuing on to number seven, we're going to deep clean the school kitchen area. Number eight, we're going to clean and sanitize the cafeteria tabletops and chairs. In this area, like we've mentioned before, we want to use something that is food service safe since it's a touch area for the kids where they're eating. Number nine, we're going to change the filters in your vacuum cleaners. This is not a deep cleaning task, but a perfect time for your annual vacuum filter change. Most all the vacuum cleaners today have the HEPA filters um, that are built in and they also have a motor filter. So most all the vacuum cleaners that you have in place will have two filters as well as the vacuum bags. So we are going to work our way into the summer break checklist, which is, you know, obviously a time when a lot of the 
teachers are off, the students are off, and it gives you guys time to hopefully focus on a lot of the you know, hard work that needs to be done in the district. Um, so we're gonna go over tips for cleaning schools over summer break. Uh, prepare a written plan that includes the following. Address floor care specifics. And this is gonna be completely independent on what type of flooring you guys have in place, whether it's a terrazzo floor or whether it's a new school that has some of the uh, newer rubberized type flooring. So before doing any floor care work, divide the facility into these areas. Floors that need to be stripped and refinished. Floors that will only need scrubbed. Floors that will only need detailed cleaning. So as far as stripping floors um, in the summer and taking, you know, if you guys have a finished program in place, um, it is not possible to go over it and strip the entire school building you know, hallways and classrooms. So we highly recommend putting it on a rotation to where you strip every year. You know, if you're using floor finish currently in your program, you strip certain sections of your building every year. And then the rest of the building, you put on a program to where you only strip every five to six years. A lot of the new uh, floor finishes, including ours, have new polymers that will not yellow over time. So this gives you a little bit more staying power where the floor finish will look good for a longer period of time. So again, to kind of recap that, uh, you know, it's not possible for you guys to strip all of your hallways and all of your school, you know, classroom uh, areas. So we recommend just doing, you know, the A, B, C, and D, you know, wing one year, and then the rest of the uh, areas you kind of just put on a rotation and just top scrub those floors. Uh, moving on, carpet extraction. Um, you know, this is, you know, carpet we could spend a whole lot of time on. It's, you know, one of the most neglected areas in most buildings. You know, it's, you know, carpet's lucky if it gets vacuumed every night. You know, for better or for worse, you know, the carpet extraction and the work interim carpet plate care. We're lucky if that happens three to four times a year in most facilities. But having said that, we recommend, you know, vacuuming daily as often as possible and then just coming up with a program for your carpet here, independent to how much high traffic areas your carpet gets. Deep cleaning restrooms and locker rooms. A lot of the uh, restrooms have grouted floors, um, which is obviously complicated. It's, the grout is the lowest part of the tile and seems to collect a lot of the uh, staining. So, you know, detailing the grout in uh, drain areas you know, will require different equipment. Um, whether it's cylindrical brushes that you have on your equipment or a uh, floor machine, um, you can kind of uh, utilize a brush one to kind of accomplish your task. But in either case, you're probably going to need a floor machine and a wet dry vac to uh, you know, complete the task along with the appropriate chemical. Completely clean door stalls, walls, vents, and light fixtures, and then you know, make any needed repairs in the restrooms as needed and or make a list for your maintenance staff to do so. So continuing on with tips for cleaning the schools over summer break, um, as part of our uh, written plan, it's gonna include the following. We're gonna attend the closet maintenance. Um, you know, everybody seems to, all of our employees have a different you know, program in place, but ultimately, if we can get them to keep their closet looking clean and presentable, you know, the optics that it kind of presents to everybody as they, you know, whether it be a teacher that might see in there, it's going to uh, present well, you know, if it's nice, neat, and orderly. So go through the janitorial closets and properly discard any, any of the chemicals or other products that have not been used in six months or longer. Um, if you're not comfortable discarding the chemicals, then I would just recommend, um, you know, getting with your vendor, with us at Alco or whomever you're currently doing business with, and they can recommend you know, how you can properly dispose of any chemicals that are, that haven't been used in six months or longer. Typically chemicals should never be stored for more than a year. Equipment issues. This is something that's very, very important because obviously, you know, your cleaning equipment and or machines, you know, help you um, to know and do your job in a more effective and timely manner. So evaluate all cleaning equipment and determine which machines are running properly 
which need servicing and which should be replaced and or prepared for replacement. So having said that, you know, the vacuums we kind of touched on, but the other, you know, items that are very, uh, you know, important and tend to need a little bit more maintenance than most is it we're going to be your wet dry vacs and your carbon extractors. The um, wet dry vacs, the vacuum shoe on them are very, very thin and those generally need to be cleaned out after every use, which doesn't always happen. So a lot of times if those get put away after being used, the everything's going to solidify in that vacuum shoe and whenever you go to get it out the next time, it may or may not work properly. Um, same with the wet dry vacs, a lot of those are being utilized to top scrub floors and remove finish you know, in conjunction with scripper and or some high pH chemicals. So a lot of times the floor finish will kind of solidify in your wet dry vacs if it's not rinsed out and maintained properly. So the carpet extractors and wet dry vacs, you know, generally tend to need a little bit more, uh, you know, attention to detail as far as, uh, you know, making sure that those are working properly for when you need them. Evaluate any cleaning protocols. Um, so, you know, this could include just, you know, making sure that all of your staff is kind of doing the same procedure. Train and perfect for the coming school year. Continue on with our summer break checklist. General and applicable to many areas in your buildings. Dust all edges and corners of the room. It's you know, particularly in classrooms, you know, in hallways, and in all rooms really, all the debris and dust tends to migrate over to the corners. So the, the summer and winter break, for that matter, is a great time to do the detailed cleaning of these corner areas. Um, this is ultimately, a, it seems to catch people's eye, for better or for worse. Clean and disinfect any flat surfaces. Vacuum and mop all floors, and that includes baseboards. You know, baseboards take up a lot of abuse, whether it's from the um, the auto scrubbers that you're using that accidentally bang into the uh, baseboards or the mops um, that you guys are swinging back and forth. Clean and disinfect all plugs, switches, and door handles. Clean all walls and touch up paint if work needs to be done in that area. Wipe and clean light covers and vacuum any light shades. Clean the windows as needed. Empty and disinfect any bins. Tidy and dust paperwork areas. Vacuum sofas and any soft seating areas. Continue on with our summer break checklist. The general and applicable to many areas in your buildings. We're going to touch on how to clean computers and keyboards. Turn off the computer and unplug the keyboard. Use a compressed air can in between all the buttons to release dust and particles from the keyboard itself. Next, spray or dip cotton swabs and special cleaning solution and wipe between each key. Usually the special cleaning solution is gonna be a, uh, uh, tend to be on the alcohol base so that it kind of dries and flash dries very quickly so it doesn't you know, ruin any electronics. Last of all, use a microfiber cloth to wipe the rest of the keyboard and computer itself. Classrooms, as far as the uh, supplies that are needed, um, again, we kind of touched on this before, but you know, our goal is to kind of standardize and get every um, person that's in your buildings cleaning in the same fundamental ways. So if we can isolate on their janitorial cards that they have their glass cleaner, they have their disinfectant, they have their microfiber tools, their mop bucket, their floor equipment. Um, start by emptying out the classroom of all desks, chairs, tables, as well as clearing out all the storage closets. Remove and clean all light fixtures. Clean the vents, or better yet, service the entire air duct system and install HEPA filters. Dust starting with the highest point in the room and work your way down. Clean the windows inside and out. Wipe down the inside and outside of all storage closets. Wipe down and disinfect all walls, counters, tables, chairs, especially the classroom sinks and faucets. Sweep, scrub, and refinish tile, hard floors, and deep clean all of the carpets. Replace or surface walkway mats. Wipe down and disinfect all computer equipment and any of the telephones that may be in the buildings. So the cafeterias and lunchroom areas, um, the supplies needed are gonna be your, same, our product is called Sanirance, which is our food service safe sanitizer. Um, products such as an oven grill cleaner, um, perhaps an enzyme to treat the drains and, and or grease traps. 
and then your microfiber tools, um, all of which with the microfiber tools are gonna help you with you know, your high dusting. You clean all feed prep equipment, including your fryers and ovens. Additionally, deep clean all sinks and or dishwashing equipment. Empty and deep clean food st storage areas, purging out any questionable or expired items. Service any drainage pipes or systems, including garbage disposals to remove buildup food waste and bacteria. Locker room. The supplies needed is going to be a disinfectant um, and most likely an electrostatic sprayer. Um, you know, again, this is easy for me to say, but in this area, um, in particular, you're going to want to clean first and disinfect second. So in doing this, I'd probably recommend using some sort of a short-handled microfiber system, like the Unger system that we had uh, discussed previously. Um, so you're going to wipe down with an all-purpose cleaner and then go back with your electrostatic sprayer to disinfect all the surfaces. So utilizing an electrostatic sprayer makes cleaning locker and shower rooms a breeze by getting the disinfectant into the hard to reach areas in a quick uh, process. Scrub the walls, lockers inside and out, showers and restrooms from top to bottom prior to disinfecting. Ensure the areas are properly ventilated and employ the use of fans to improve ventilation as necessary. And these fans will also help uh, the areas um, dry a little quicker. So, you know, these can kind of tend to uh, build up uh, bacteria if the areas don't dry in a quick manner, especially in the uh, summer months when the temperature is rather hot. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let us know.